challenge each of those reps to watch my testing video where I 100% debunked the myth. Stop, stop, stop lying to people. If you're considering going solar, one of the crucial decisions you will need to make is choosing the right inverter technology for your solar panel system. The inverter is the heart of a solar installation and it takes that direct current, the DC electricity generated by your solar panels and then converts it into alternating current, the AC electricity that then powers your home or feeds into the grid. Hey guys, my name is Martina and in today's video we will explore the two main types of inverters used in residential solar installations. One, string inverter and two, microinverters. And I will try to help you understand the key differences between the two of those. So let's get right into it and please do not forget to like and subscribe. This helps my channel grow. As young as it is, I also have an important point and a tip for you that's at the end of the video, so make sure to stay till then. So what is a string inverter? Well, a string inverter is a centralized inverter that is typically installed in the side of your house or in your garage. Now, oftentimes installers will install the central inverter pair with power optimizers. This will allow for panel level monitoring as well as optimal power output of each panel, plus of course, rapid shutdown if required. Now on ground mounted systems or on patio covers or pergolas, carports, Unless lots of shade is present, the extra cost of optimizers doesn't really make sense. And just to get this very, very clear, all hybrids such as Solark 15, EG4, the newest Powerwall 3 by Tesla, those are all string inverters. All hybrids are strings, but not all strings are hybrids. So what are the advantages of string inverters? One the cost effectiveness. String inverters are generally less expensive than microinverters, making them a more budget-friendly option for solar installation. Two, simpler installation and service. String inverters require fewer components and connections, resulting in a more straightforward installation process. The electrician simply works in your garage or on the ground level, making all the needed connections. This also makes for future easier service because most of the equipment is again on the ground level. Since the inverter is doing the hardest job in the solar installation, it has the highest chance of having an issue. Hence, again, ground level makes it much easier to service and therefore less expensive. And finally, three, easy future expansion. Not only you should be able to add more panels to an existing string inverter with no need for extra inverters, now obviously up to a point, like if you're adding 15 panels, you will need an extra inverter, but it also makes adding batteries in the future a much, much easier process because you have more options of DC as well as AC coupling the batteries. Now, what are the disadvantages of string inverters? Well, before I get to them, I do need to clarify a disadvantage that most sales reps will tell you that with string inverters, if one panel is shaded, it affects all the other panels on that particular string as well. Everybody refers to this as Christmas lights effect. That used to be the case decades ago, but is a mute point with current technology. So if you hear this, they are either incompetent or actually acting in bad faith. Idiots. I'm sorry. I challenge each of those reps to watch my testing video where I 100% debunked the myth. Stop lying to people. All right, now the actual disadvantages. So one, is actually smaller efficiency in severe shading. So if your roof is heavily shaded, string inverter by itself might not be the way to go. Adding power optimizers or microinverters might be a much, much better idea. Two, single point of failure. Now, since all of the panels are connected to a single inverter, a failure in that one inverter can actually bring down the entire system until it is repaired or replaced. And three, limited panel level monitoring. String inverters typically provide string level monitoring, but lack the ability of monitoring performance of individual panels. 
Now you can, of course, add those power optimizers and get the panel level monitoring if you so wish. Now we will talk a little bit more in detail about that in a few minutes as well. For example, with Powerwall 3 or with Solark SMA inverter, you get string level monitoring, so just smaller groups of panels. Now moving on to microinverters. So a microinverter, as the name suggests, is a small inverter that is attached to each individual solar panel on the roof. It converts the DC electricity produced by that specific panel into AC electricity on the roof, independently from the other panels in the system. Now, what are the advantages of microinverters? One, improved shade tolerance. So based on my testing of microinverters versus power optimizers, we got about 3% improvement in significant shading conditions. I'll make sure to link that test down below. I highly, highly, highly recommend you watch it. Now point number two, panel level monitoring. Microinverters allow for panel level monitoring, enabling easy identification of underperforming panels. And three, minimize downtime. The distributed nature of microinverters ensures that if one inverter experiences issues, only the corresponding panel is affected, significantly reducing the potential for system-wide downtime. Disadvantages of microinverters. One, higher upfront cost. Microinverters are generally more expensive than string inverters due to the need for actually multiple units, basically one per panel. Now I go into cost differences of string versus micro in my testing video as well. Link down in the description below. <laughs> Point number two, potential for higher maintenance costs. With more components involved, microinverter systems may require more maintenance and more potential replacements over time. Also, keep in mind that the inverter will be located on top of the roof and not in your garage, which can lead to a higher labor cost when fixing a single unit. And finally, three, limited scalability. Microinverter systems may have limitations when it comes to expanding the system in the future. As new technology, as the newer technology microinverters, they might not be compatible with the existing ones that you have already on your roof. Likewise, with adding a battery, you will be limiting yourself to AC coupled battery systems since the power that comes into your house is already AC. So, which one is right for you? Well, the choice between string inverter and microinverter system really depends on various factors, including your budget, site conditions such as shading, desired monitoring capabilities, and potential for future system expansion. And in my opinion, the biggest one, will you want to add a battery in the future? If you don't deal with a lot of shading, I don't understand why using simple string inverter, even with no optimization, would be a bad idea. Now, it would definitely bring the fastest return on investment, which is literally what everybody is after. Now, if you are dealing with a small system and lots of different arrays, maybe the extra cost of micros is worth it for you. Now, regardless of shading, bigger systems such as 10, 15 kilowatts or even above 20 tend to do much better price-wise with string inverters, whereas smaller systems below 10 or even 6 kilowatts might actually come out cheaper with microinverters. Now, I do want to bring up an idea of panel level monitoring because most of the time when we replace the microinverter or power optimizer, in 99% of cases, it is not the panel, but it is the unit itself that has failed. So sometimes I wonder, are we really adding something to the panel to tell us when that particular thing fails? You get my meaning? <laughs> now, I highly recommend, again, you watch that other video where I talk about which one I would install or I have installed on my three homes so far. I'll link that as well for you down below. Now, ultimately, consulting with a reputable solar installer and considering your specific needs will help make you a much informed decision between the two of these inverter technology. And I truly, truly hope that my, that my video was helpful to a point. Now, finally, the tip. So 
or it's not really the tip. Do let me know down in the comments your thoughts on this. So the whole point of a single point of failure actually fails when the battery is installed because in all cases, there will be some form of a transfer switch, whether that's the gateway, combiner box, envoy, etc. that if that unit fails, it brings the whole system down. Share your thoughts down below if the whole one point of failure still applies with the battery system and what your thoughts are. And again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.